Now, there's been a misreaction to the passing of the Electoral Amendment Bill yesterday. Civil society organizations and some political parties say the bill disadvantages independent candidates. 232 MPs voted in favor of the bill, while 98 were against it. Let's get now reaction from political party Build One South Africa with its leader, Musi Maimane. Mr. Maimane, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time. I, I don't think uh, disappointed might describe how you feel at this moment. Good afternoon and good afternoon to fellow South Africans. I, I certainly think that this is malicious compliance with the Constitutional Court because this was an order of court actually insisting that South Africa review its Electoral Act to make it possible really that citizens get to know who governs them and that the citizens has the power. But instead, Parliament has made it harder. It's in fact done the minimalist approach it's even made it impossible for independence to stand. And I think to me, it's if you look at the fact that the closing remarks at the Zondo Commission by Judge Zondo said that isn't a time that we look at this issue as a way to solve state capture is an indicator that we are going to have state capture of a different kind if we continue along the same trajectory. What, what's, the, what's the malicious compliance? I mean, can you just look at that? Because the Constitutional Court, according to the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi, earlier, speaking to my colleague Masiho Rashaka on all angles, the Constitutional Court did not mandate a change or an overhaul of the electoral system. Well, the Constitutional Court knew very clearly that if you said public representation can be done by an individual, it knew that it would be unstitching a very significant pillar upon which the house that Electoral Act is built on stands on. And so when I talk about malicious compliance, it's this sense that even if you allow an individual to stand, at this stage, it would be asking someone to run the Comrades Marathon backwards without shoes on and hope that they can win. Secondly, if you allow individuals, even if they come from parties, at least let the citizens get to know them, it would have meant that the elections needed to take place in a constituency-based system. So frankly, they didn't do that. Thirdly, it would have meant that if an individual stands or individual members of even a political party stand, that when you tally the results, you were able to be clear that this is indeed the will of the people. So at this point in time, if, for argument's sake, an individual stands for an election and gets two million votes, that does not mean they get the significant proportion. They'll end up with one seat. Whereas if a political party did the same exercise, they would end up with near 80 seats. So to me, it is a failure that is not only born out of this constitutional court judgment, but really historically that even President Mandela raised the issue, President Mbeki raised it yesterday, President Mutante has raised it in the high-level panel report. And so, for me, when I say it's malicious compliance, it's when people don't want to do the job of accountability and have the people govern by, and make it literally impossible to reform the Electoral Act. It's a bit of an obfuscation for the minister to say, look, we were not asked to do that. You were asked to do something that was important to the Electoral Act. So it looks like there's a missed opportunity in your view there that the Parliament uh, uh, has, has, has done. But uh, there's still another final step. I just want your views about how you see the way forward. The President has not yet signed the bill into law. So it's not yet uh, 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 proclaimed. Would you make uh, representations with the presidency to say do not sign this bill into law? Or are you going to go the legal route? Well, I, I do think as South Africans, we need to find a solution here that is workable. And I would make submission to the president to say that the bill as it's presented at the moment is not going to pass constitutional muster. And if you want free and fair elections in 2024, we need to come to some consensus. And my proposal still holds. That's It's why we started Build One South Africa, because we understood that the law wasn't going to change sufficiently. And also we want to change the issues in the country. I think there must be two or three items that must be held in abeyance for a transitional government in 2024 to be able to manage? And then furthermore, how do we strengthen accountability? Because that's what this battle is about. And then say, what are the things that we can live with for now? Because if you don't do that and you allow just simply a court process to take place for every passing day, 
is a day that the IEC itself cannot prepare for an election for 2024. And the voters can't be educated about how they need to vote in 2024, how they can exercise their vote. And so therefore you put the election in 2024 in absolute jeopardy. And I don't think there's a single citizen who would want that given the state of South Africa at this point. If that consensus is not achieved, do you, do you foresee a delay in the holding of the general elections in 2024? Well, undeniably, because what will then in fact happen is that any outcome of that election could not be deemed free or fair. Because if an act has been deemed unconstitutional, you can't use uh, uh, those rules so to, uh, to use in an election and therefore ultimately any result will be unconstitutional which would be challenged in court. So unless South Africa wants to find itself in a space where in 2025, 2026 we are without a government, then I would suggest that we need to find a consensus and we need to a court binding agreement that allows this country to move ahead. And I think this is a time for leadership. I think parliament has failed. It's now up to the executive to lead and if the executive will fail in this regard, I would urge that uh, the only place this matter will end up is in a concord. And I, I would suggest that that would be the worst place to be because ultimately it puts the risk in 2020. Thank you very much for your time and, uh, and reflections about this decision by Parliament to pass the Electoral Amendment Bill. That's Mr. Musi Maimane, the leader of Build 1SA.